Hey, good morning. Yes, I'm going to look at the COP27 repentance ceremony. So I'm calling a repentance review because we've already discussed quite a bit, but I'm going to look at a few things together with you guys. And let's start right here. All right, I just wanted to give you an example of how it all started, you know, with the blowing of the horn and then the bell ringing between every person that spoke there. Now, I'm not going to share a lot of the video. This was the man who rang the bell, by the way. Yeah, but it was such a poor video, you know, for the Antichrist coming. I'm surprised he didn't use celebrities, didn't use like the top video photographers. It was just so poor, I can't even begin to tell you. And it was all about, yeah, hope and unity and the climate change principles like we've looked at already. But it was so poorly organized, I, I don't even know what to tell you. But please watch, and it starts way past the hour um, spot. But, you know, you heard care for each other and the planet. Okay, human well-being and a discipled spiritual life is helpful in overcoming the challenges in climate change. You know, I don't know what to tell you, but if they would just leave out the climate change, you know, there might have been something good a little bit in there. Of course, of course, you're going to find something good in there. Actions have consequences, right? Act knowing that every action counts. See, things like that. We adopt a mindful and attentive view of the natural world, love and compassion. And for those who suffer consequences of climate change, like I said, just leave that out. Oy. Opening our hearts to the pain will lead us to change. Well, see, there is some interesting things in there. And of course, like I said, it began with the horn and it ends with blowing of the horn. All right, I spared you because he blows that horn for, yeah, almost a whole minute. And it doesn't sound like long, but trust me, it is. And what came to mind was an old song, you know, blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion, sound the alarm. It just came to mind. I don't know if you have ever heard of it. But anyway, it was all about, like we know, the climate change. And all I can say is, you know, the 13 says it all right there in climate change it's the i <laughs> yeah we know who wants to be the i am right of them all so we know who's behind this i don't need to explain that to you guys you know and understand the danger in all this coming together you know right but i wanted to look at israel's point of view and their perspective on things so i went into israel today and so this is what i found okay i found the interfaith climate repentance event and what do you see of course, they have a picture of a guy and he's got the 13 on him. <laughs> I have to laugh. I really do. But let's see what they had to say. Mm, Israel is playing an outsized role at the United Nations. Ah, yes, we know they are. Outsized, it means a larger than the standard, right? And boy, do I just hear the chiming of the Noahide laws constantly. And my older video of it, like I said, I have someone on there that I don't trust anymore. You know, we all grow and realize who not to trust. And now I don't trust anybody. I'm just saying, I will listen to others, but I do not trust. I test everything and I hope that you do too. But it, Noahide laws have seven laws. And so even though this has 10, that's a lot of danger in there. And we're going to look at the comparison of what they showed in Israel in that news article. But first I want to show you this Elijah interfaith. I forgot to mention that they're, of course, united with UNESCO. So we know who they all are. But also Rockefeller Brothers Fund. I mean, that's just the icing on the cake of it all, right? I mean, we know Rockefeller, right? I don't think I need to share. They might show some beautiful pictures in Facebook and 
talk about, you know, Picasso. Ah, yes, but I've already looked at Picasso. I, you know, but anyway, you know, talking about all the same baloney, right? About how they used to drive in cars years ago, but yet they're now talking about the whole climate change. But yeah, anyway. So what difference was there? I want to show you here. They show them clearly. We are stewards of this world. I want to you know, questioning the whole we perspective, of course, but um, repent and return. And I'm questioning, you know, repenting and returning. Yes, if it's about returning to Jesus and to him alone, absolutely. But we understand that's not what they're talking about here because Israel is the one performing and helping in all this, right? And then number 10, use mind and open heart. We clearly can see that is new age, but, you know, be careful not to empty your mind, just like in the whole yoga. I have a whole video on yoga if you're interested. But anyway, it's about a spiritual battle we're in. So this is the perspective that the Israel article had. You know, you can read all this. Creation is not our possession. The human person must recognize this and find her rightful place in relation to this fundamental act. For some of us, this leads to the sense of gratitude for God's gift and for the gift for life itself, wherein humanity takes itself rightful place as a partner and co-creator in advancing the life of all creation. For others, creation itself is sacred. I'm just going to read this first paragraph for you. And we recognize human responsibility to love and protect nature. But they're saying that we should be co-creators. And wow, you know, you can read the rest for yourself, but co-creator um did we help making anything here on earth you know and the sky the trees the oceans the animals i'm just i'm just wondering you know but you already know the answer to this i don't need to say it but no <laughs> we had nothing nothing to do with any of this but anyway hmm they go on and in the fourth part not to harm creation you know commit to not harm creation and the responsibility to protect it. Absolutely. Okay. But does this mean that we're not to, you know, eat animals and and kill the cows and the chickens? You know, I'm just wondering how they're going with all this. And the words that got left out, I just added them there to the right, by the way. And then it talks about um, a disciplined spiritual life is helpful in overcoming the challenges. If they would just leave and stop there, right? I totally agree. But then they add <laughs> this whole C climate change, the CC, right? Uh, you know, but read please their version here. Um, empowered by mind, reason, and spiritual understanding we adopt a mindful and attentive view of natural world. You know, it sounds so new age, I can't even begin to tell you, but let's look at number 10. Okay, love and compassion. Yeah, care for the other is expressed in love and compassion and the fundamental spiritual principles. There are to be applied to other humans, human communities, and other parts of creation. I love how they have to use the word human. I mean, what else is on this earth? You know, are they trying to say there's another being? I mean, I know there's animals, I'm not saying, but, you know, it's just bizarre wording. But, you know, we have to, I guess, say that these days, you know, since other people are identifying as <laughs> all kinds of things. But anyway, if they would just leave the climate con change out, it, it sounds somewhat okay in parts I'm, I'm saying right but then it says be sensitive to the intolerable insecurities and injustices in which so many of our fellow humans live and i meant to put a picture here and right now i'm thinking i didn't but i wish they would question all those that are helping lead all this you know how they're spraying how they're doing all the harm to our world and they're the ones who are preaching about this. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys. I just see the hypocrisy in all of this. I know you guys do too. But I want to point out some verses. You know, God says for us to be over all. He had dominion over all the creatures of this world, right? I'm just saying. That's what it says. And yes, we are to love our neighbor as yourself. And 
totally agree with that. <sighs> but they lack so much in this and the danger of this we can already see. I mean, the Antichrist being revealed is, is very close. Very, very close. And now these three main things that the Bible says, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is is love and that's what we should be doing is loving and also praying for the, those all around us even even these people but whatever happened here at cop 27 and the repentance ceremony at the right or the wrong place you know whatever it was it doesn't matter anyone connected to the un or to any part of this is corrupt and that's all i'm saying and the, we've been warned over and over and over again of the deception and how much of it would be around us, you know, and the false prophets. And so that's all I'm saying. All those who are connected, following the WHO or in the UN in any way, shape or form, you know, who followed orders during the whole pandemic, you are needing to p repent because we know who they are. It's clear in the things that are behind them. I had to pause, sorry, my throat. I don't know, got a little dry throat there. But I've been trying to warn for so long, and many people just aren't listening. A lot of these have been taken down. I'll see if I can upload them in my fifth channel. But it's time for you to trust in Jesus, and I hope really that you do. I'm not a perfect person, you know, and I can't even believe that I'm here and that anyone would want to be listening. But I put my trust in him and follow him. And we all fall short of the glory of God. I'm not a perfect person by any means. But I know that I will never turn my back on the only one that gives hope, grace, forgiveness. And the only one to God. The only way. The only way. And I hope truly that you understand that and look to him. All right, that's it. I'll be looking at different things tomorrow. Maybe FIFA. We'll see. And let's have a great day. God bless you guys.